Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Everybody ready to go to hand clap? Come on. Let's wake up this morning, man. New faces, welcome to the Lord, man. Welcome to the Lord, welcome to the Lord. I don't know who you are, but I saw people from my team. So, welcome to the Lord, man. But anyways, man, God is good. God has been great this week, man. We woke up yet another year, another day. Woke up again. Um, so this week, how bad has the devil been after this week? Now, when I say devil, I'm going to use that synonymous, you know, with you know, just the entire demonic realm itself. But come on, how often has the devil been after this week? Because they don't stop, right? But that's the beauty of it, because neither does God. God never stops. Especially when you get the mindset of, you know, whether it's your flesh, whether it's the devil, you know, if God's for you. If God's for us. Say to yourself real quick, if God's for us. I didn't know that ain't loud enough. Come on. If God is for us, come on. Say it, say it. If God is for us, then who can be against us? We come in church with that mentality. Who can be against us? Did you say that when you when you walked in the door this morning? Who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? Nothing. Nothing. Because we have the mind of Christ. We are as Christ is. So it doesn't matter how much we were attacked this week. It doesn't matter how much our flesh went to war with, you know, against us. It doesn't matter. Because God is for us. Thank God for His grace that He's for us. And then regardless of how much I ignore Him, because we all do sometimes where we start getting off in our, you know, our own little mentality, but no matter what, He's still there. Satan runs his mouth. Your flesh runs its mouth. But God is still there. God never runs. God, if God is for us. Y'all stand up with me for a minute. Let me get everybody awake this morning. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Shit, yeah, let's, let's, let's wake up, man. Let's wake up, let's wake up. Dry bones start rattling. Woo, man. Feels so good. How many anybody feel good this morning? How, how many? Come on. Do we feel good? Let's lift up a little bit. Give us some praise. Come on. Wake up. Come on, man. Come on. Thanks for worshiping. Come on. Help me out here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's a blessing to be able to be here in front of everybody as other believers. Look, we're standing up because we're awake now. We ain't sitting down. I'm excited. Are you excited? I just feel in my spirit right now grace. I'm happy. Grace. No, it didn't go my way this week. But guess what? God's still here. I'm still able to worship. I'm still able to say His name. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. I saw a post this morning. I'm not going to mention the name. They went down memory lane. And on this post this morning, you know, remember where you used to be, and then here you are now. I know what my past is, but I'm still happy. My past doesn't change my happiness today. It ain't going to dictate how I'm going to be at church, or how I talk to God, how I see God, and how I hear God, because now... I hear him so much differently than I did back then. That's something to give God praise for. I hear him differently. Praise the Lord. We hear him differently. Who wants to hear God differently today? We ready to receive this morning. Everybody will hold your hands up and just pray. Lord, Lord, we're ready to hear you differently this morning. We're ready to receive you differently this morning. We're ready to receive you differently. We want to, Lord, we, are, we activate that Holy Spirit this morning, God. We raise our hand to you this morning, Lord. We receive it in Jesus' name. Whatever revelation you got to give us this morning, we're ready. We are ready. We're awake. We're happy. We're happy because we can say your name. We're happy because no much, no matter how much Satan attacks, no matter how much our flesh comes at us, you are coming at us the same way. You are always there. Lord, thank you for that. We are happy. We are alive because of you, Lord. And God, we know you're here today. And I know everybody in here believes with me. God's here with Lordwood right now with us. If two or more in agreement, there ain't anything against God's with us. So let's keep that mentality this morning. God is here now. So if you want it, receive it. Receive a new revelation this morning. I can see minds being just bread just opened up more so than they were last week. Lord, we thank you for that grace and the revelation, God, this morning. We thank you. Just meditate on that, that new revelation this morning. I'm alive this morning. I didn't feel alive, but because of the Spirit, I know I'm alive. And because the Spirit will wake up my flesh, it will override my flesh, and it will keep me moving. My past doesn't dictate my future. Lord, you dictate my future. Think about that. That Holy Spirit, just let it flow. Just let it flow. And if you will, just move your body a little bit. 
let it sway. Allow that. Just, just get loose in the spirit. Get loose in the spirit. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Just right there with you, Lord. Revelation, revelation. Healing, healing, prosperity. We're not dry today. We might have been a little dry yesterday. But we're not dry today. We might have felt dry this morning, but we're not dry right now. No, sir. Because the word says differently. Because if you are for us, if you are for us, then who can be against us? Let's think about that this morning. Who can be against us? Lord, we thank you for the word this morning. We thank you for the music, God. We thank you for your presence. Because we know it's here, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you. In your mighty name, we pray. And everybody said, in a happy voice, amen. Y'all keep on standing for just a second, if you don't mind.
Amen. Let's see again. Let the mice cube get to the bottom of the cup. <laughs> But your time with the Lord be much, and your time with the word world be few. I feel like Ann Stephanie's talked to so many one on ones this week. Praise God. But it's sad. His crew is great. The ministry is moving, but it's sad when you talk to these people and you just see where they're at in life. And your heart's cries you want them to be free. You want them to get it. You want them to be able to know how to put one foot in front of the other in faith and hope and love. And just to see how many people just really don't know. And they don't have no people to lead them. And a lot of people we're running into, man, just needs a, a, a parent would do. Not even a whole set. And just one godly one would do. Story, but if I had to put my mind in the minds of one of the people who just basically broke out of prison, probably weak and malnourished, under equipped, probably barefoot, and just to think that all hope looked lost, Lord, but that strong east wind that you sent blew all night, Lord, and even though a miracle was happening, Lord. Even though you had the strong east wind blowing all night to part to see it and drive the bed for it, they still had to endure the wind too. Father, help us endure the wind in our life, Lord. Help us endure the storm, Lord. Help us endure the wind of your spirit, Lord, why it blows away all the spirit of laziness off of us. Lord, I ain't trying to make no resolutions. I want a revelation, Lord. Lord, speak to you people this morning, Lord. Whatever we're doing, how are we doing? We can do it better, Lord. Lord, show us what to throw away. Show us what to keep. Where are you at? 
and that nudging is saying, I'm here, I'm faithful, and I just turn away and do something else. But it was literally like, I felt like an, like an addict in a way, like, and not just on Facebook, but like I couldn't just turn to the Lord. And I felt guilty and I felt shameful. And me and Richard were laying in bed the other night and like he just started talking to me and like we weren't even talking about that and I hadn't even talked to him about this because I have to be strong because I am who I am and I'm just like I'll, I'll figure it out, I'll figure it out. And he just like started talking to me like Jesus would and whenever I looked at him in the eyes I saw Jesus and it's like I'm just laying in Jesus' lap and he's so gently correcting me. And I even had to like blink my eyes because it wasn't Richard, it was the Lord and he was saying, you're so distracted. And it's not that you're not good enough, it's not that you've done this or that. It's, it's, and the whole week had been preparing me because it's like I just, every time I turned around, I just kept hearing it's a small thing, it's a small thing. It's, it feels like there's this huge gap, but it is such a small thing that needs to be adjusted. And I'm going to be honest, I turn it on a sermon, nah, I don't want to listen to that. Open up my Bible, nah, I don't want to do that. I just, and I felt guilty because I just have not been hungry for it. And after he talked to me, and I rolled over and I just poured my heart out to the Lord. And it's like, the Lord has just been doing such a refreshment and such a renewing. And every time I turn around, it's like he's just been hitting me and hitting me and hitting me. And it's not that he went anywhere, that his plans changed for me. And how merciful and gracious that he is that I've just been ignoring and been numb. That as soon as I took the step and the opportunity, like he was right there, like he'd been dying and waiting to just show me these things and talk to me about these things. So I just want to encourage you today, it's not a big thing that needs to happen. <coughs> it is not something huge in your life that you need to make all these adjustments and it's just going to be a ton of work. We sat in our living room last night with our Bibles open with Hannah and just was reading. And we were literally, it's like, we were literally asking God questions so fast and discussing things so fast that we couldn't even finish talking about the first thing because the second thing is like we were just gobbling it up because we were starving for His Word. Because being numb and being lazy is easy to do with the burden that it puts on you. It's very heavy and it's very hard to carry even though you're doing nothing. So God, I just ask that you just come today and get rid of our laziness, Lord. Lord, I ask that you just give us a new hunger and a new thirst. Lord, that if we feel like we've just been stuck and stuck and we've been asking you, where are you at? What are you doing, God? That you will just come and that you will just renew and that you're not done. It's not over. There is still a word of the Lord. There is still a mission. There is still a purpose. There is still a place. And talking to that girl that we had to talk to, like it's so sad because this, here's this little girl who grew up in a meth house and she has a baby and she's 22 and she has nothing or nobody and she wants to change and she wants it so bad and when I'm talking to her about the Lord, and I'm telling her to pray. She's like, well, you can only do that at bedtime, right? She has no clue. And there are people around us that have no clue. Lord, help us be their clue. That when they get us, God, they get you. That we are not so distracted by Facebook. Or we are not so distracted by our own lives. And our own relationships. And our own things that we forget. That there are people out there that need you, Lord. Because it's important. And Vivian, I just want to thank you so much. No, you were a mom of me. And it was very important. And you were a friend and you showed me why. And I've touched a lot of people, not because I'm so great, but because you're so great, but because we were obedient. 
And obedience is hard. Nobody likes to be obedient. But man, the fruit that we like from being obedient. <laughs> Lord, change the taste of our palate to crave you and to crave the things of you. Change our palate, God. <clears throat> It's not, it's a small thing that needs to happen here, guys. It's not a big thing. It's a small, small thing. And it's like I can see this dam and there's a little, a small crack. And the pressure that's been behind it from where we've just been sitting and where we've just been not being obedient or not coming forth. It is a small crack in this. The, the word of the Lord has just been building up and building up and building up inside of us. Our purpose has just been building up and we feel like it's been a hold back. But when that crack finally breaks, it's a small thing that needs to happen. But the big thing that is going to come afterwards. Change our palate.
because he's passing by. Here I am. 
but show them why it's fair that he's come to the woods to get his people. You might be out sitting on the law and I'm doing up for a long time, or maybe you've never done anything to the Lord. But he's coming after his people. They're coming out of the woods. They're going to stand up in homes. They're going to stand up in righteousness. They're going to stand up in boldness. They're going to stand up in the schoolhouse. They're going to stand up in the workplace. They're going to be more holy in home. They're holy in their conversation. They're holy in what they're looking at. They're holy in what they're listening to. Because it's coming to get you right where you are.